So I'm entering the last week of my tastings of the 2019 vintage here in Burgundy, in the Côte d'Or. And uh, all of those uh, notes will be published in a report coming out in the Wine Advocate at the usual time. But there's so much uh, excitement about the vintage on the one hand, on the other so few people have been able to taste it because of all the problems with coronavirus that uh, I wanted to offer some preliminary thoughts on the year. Uh, that was a year defined by a dry winter. Uh, this set the stage for a hydric deficit throughout the season of about 60%. Uh, really a dry year, and that combined with the um, effects of rather inclement weather at the time of flowering resulted in notably low yields. So a lot of shot berries, small clusters. In the whites, producers who were making in 2018 a very generous vintage, let's say they, they made the appellation uh, maximum yield, in 2019 were making much more like 20, 25, 30 uh, hectolitres per hectare and were happy to do so. Some uh, producers reported even less than that. Uh, below average yields for the most part in the red wines too. And then a, a sunny um, growing season with some heat spikes, especially in the month of, of July. On average around three degrees Fahrenheit warmer than an average year. Uh, and you could say about 20% more sunshine hours than usual. 2018, that was 30% more. So it's a less extreme vintage than 2018. It was cooler weather at the time of harvest when the grapes were picked and that helped as well. Uh, so the result is, is wines that are very concentrated. That's clear. And that's most noticeable in the, in the white wines. Uh, the white wines are powerful, but the, the effect of concentration, and this was exaggerated by a, a dry north wind around the last few weeks of the harvest, which really made the sugars uh, rocket, but it also concentrated the acidities. So the 2019 whites at their best are very muscular, powerful wines, but also rather chiseled, uh, rather dynamic. And after all the things that I heard about these wines being very heavy and uh, rich, uh, I was very positively surprised to see the acidities. For the most part, um, talking uh, broad brush strokes, of course, but the pHs are lower than the pHs of the 2018s, and there's also a lot more substance. Uh, it's sometimes it's helpful to think of analogies, and if you were going to find analogies for the 2019 whites, I'd say you have the, the very sort of phenolic dry extract and concentration of 2015 with the ripe skins of the grapes that you can really taste in, in the, the structure, physical structure of the wines. Uh, there's a sort of creamy textural quality also which comes from this very low yield. It's more reminiscent of 2012, another low yielding vintage, albeit one with very different conditions. And then there's a sort of freshness, um, a brightness to the acidity that in many respects is more reminiscent of a, a serious vintage like 2017. So taken together, I was generally rather favorably impressed by, by wines uh, about which I've heard um, somewhat unflattering uh, remarks. And uh, in fact, in many cases, I found 2019s more interesting than 2018s. Uh, I'm certainly going to be adding uh, plenty to my cellar, or selectively, of course, but that's, uh, that's of course, the nature of Burgundy. Uh, 2019 reds, I had already from the beginning a much clearer sense of, of how they'd be because I actually made some myself and uh, from the very beginning when the grapes entered the tank they were just uh, striking, you know, um, incredibly pure, perfumed, expressive fruit, uh, very subtle velvety tannins and a lovely sense of energy, of dynamism, even though this is like 2018 before it, a vintage defined by sunshine, uh, the result is quite different in fact. 2018s can often be rather monolithic, very structured, broad-shouldered wines, carrying a lot of tannin, a lot of color. Uh, the 19s are less saturated in hue, they're more immediately expressive, the tannins are much more charming. You know, it was a year when you could take a lot of press wine and um, didn't have to be very selective about that sort of thing, 2018. Press wine in 2018 was uh, absolutely black and uh, you know, mouth puckeringly structured and extracted. So 20, 2018, um, being this, this uh, monolithic vintage, 2019 is much more finessed, elegant, and um, immediately expressive, charming. I think you could say, looking at analogies again, that uh, it combines some of the grace and perfume and, and um, pleasurability of the 2017s with some of the depth and seriousness and concentration of the 2015s. That's a very charming combination for sure. And 
Uh, looking further back, I might point to uh, vintage such as 1964, which is also a vintage sort of defined by sunshine, generosity, and wealth of fruit, but similarly one that leaves a lot of space for the nuances of sight, nuances of producer that make Burgundy so fa fascinating. So 2019, um, even though it's going to be a below, it's a below average crop, so there's not that much wine to go around. Um, and these are challenging circumstances for a lot of wine merchants and a lot of importers, but uh, it's going to be well worth uh, getting, getting uh, your allocations this year. And I, I really found a, a great deal to, to be excited about going up and down the Côte d'Or tasting this fall.